Welcome to the Don't Let That Go Over Your Head podcast, starring Q the Boss. Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to another episode of Don't Let That Go Over Your Head podcast. They call me Q the Boss. Today's a very special topic. Today, we're talking about don't crash out. And when I say that term, crash out, man, that's a very famous term. A lot of people are literally cash crashing out with their lives right now. They're playing games. They're not focused on anything other than what they're focused on. And this is the problem, man. I've seen people literally make the worst decisions consistently, expecting better results. But as we know, that is the definition of insanity, doing the same thing every day but expecting different results. I say this to my young people. Don't let five seconds of anger give you 25 years of your life in prison. And to my ladies, I say this to you. Don't let a poor sexual encounter end up being 18 years of your life dealing with a person you don't want to deal with. Let me say that again. For my young, for my people, don't let five seconds of anger make you make a poor choice where you end up doing the rest of your life in prison. And to my ladies, don't let a poor sexual encounter end up being the reason why you have to deal with a poor man or a bad man for the next 18 years. I'm telling you, this is the thing we do about this thing called crashing out. Some of us do poor things. I'm going to give you a story. I had a good friend of mine, and she went to Vegas. And the crazy thing about this girl, her life was together. And when I say together, she had it going on. She was a lawyer. Well, she still is a lawyer. Right? She flew out to Vegas, ended up meeting a guy. And when she met the guy, you know, they say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, right? So when she got to Vegas, she met a guy and she was very attracted to the guy. And they end up being, they end up hitting it off. But the problem was the guy was supposed to leave the next day to fly back to New York. By coincidence, both of them were from New York. So the guy was like, you know what? I'll stay, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I bring green dots, meaning green dots is cards that you load up. He said he only loaded up a certain amount of money on his credit cards so he don't spend too much money because he's on a budget. So he told her he can't spend more money because of the fact that him coming down there, he was limited to how much money he wanted to spend, so he, he got a green dot. So she believed it. She said, you know what? They hit it off that night and really, really liked each other. She said, you know what? Come stay in my room. He was like, I can stay with you. She was like, yeah, you know, he's like, no problem. So anyway, he ended up moving and staying in her room while they were on vacation. She had another three days. So for the next three days, they hung out every single day. But be mindful, he said that he was limited in resources because of the fact that he put all his money on a load-up card and he was limited to the amount of money he came down there with. She believed it, right? Fast forward for the next three days, she's paying for everything. Restaurants, she's paying for everything. He said, when we get back to New York, I'll compensate you. And she believed it. Fast forward, she gets back to New York. He doesn't compensate her, right? Because he wasn't who he said he was. But throughout the duration of her meeting this guy in Vegas, she thought this guy was a particular person. See, one thing I will say this to my ladies, and a lot of times where y'all crash out is, y'all allow words to mean more than action. A man could not do absolutely nothing for you but tell you everything that he wants to do for you. And sometimes, I hate to say this, more ladies respect that. But a man could absolutely do everything for you and say absolutely nothing and you won't respect that. Because I've noticed in most cases, women are very, very infatuated with words. What people say. But the actions aren't reflecting that, right? But yet and still, you know, we, women get infatuated with words. So she got caught up in everything he said. He you know, talk to underwear off. End up sleeping with this guy on vac vacation, uh, multiple times, of course, right? Come back to New York, and she finds out that she's Damn. pregnant. Damn. Damn. And when she finds out she's pregnant, she's like, oh my God, what am I to do? Mind she's pregnant, right? And she don't even know who it was. And she didn't even know, she don't even know this guy. She know of what he told her, right? So now she's finding out she's pregnant. She's like, oh my God, I'm pregnant. What am I to do? So she calls him. She tells him, be mindful. She don't really even know where he really lives. 
This is the crash out. She was on vacation having fun. And a fun moment turned into a lifetime, right, of having a child. So watch this statement now. So after she got pregnant, she calls the guy. She tells him, like, you know, da, 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 this, is the, this is the issue. He says to her, watch this. Are you sure it's mine? Are you sure it's mine? Right? She knew his name, but she didn't know really anything about fact or fiction. Because I know in, on vacations and places, people meet a lot of people that tell stories. And they lie a lot. Right? We live in a world where more people are really lying. Right? So anyway, now she gets pregnant by the guy. She calls him. She said, I need to come see you. The guy was like, you know what? I bet. Come see me, but not today. Maybe tomorrow, another day. Three days later, she gets his address to his apartment. She goes to the apartment. Watch this. When she gets to the apartment, she knocks on the door. He lets her in. He's showing around the place. She's excited. She's like, at least I'm about to have a baby with a man that has his life together from what she can see. Aesthetically, everything makes sense. The, 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 the location, everything looked good, right? This lady was grown in, in the late 20s, late, late, uh, early 30s, early 30s, excuse me, early 30s. So watch this. So after she sees the place, she's like, wow, you know, he's not, he's not a bum. Fast forward. She goes, hey, can I come over tonight? Mine, she's, she's pregnant, so time is going by now. So they're trying to plan on how they're going to do this thing. At this point, he realizes, like, you know what? I want to do the family thing with her, right? Watch how good this man is. When she finally finds out, let me go before I even say that. She calls him and say, y'all want to come over? He goes, yo, you can't come over. He goes, why? She goes, why? He says, because... She has her brother, he has his brother living with him now. And it's a one bedroom apartment, so he don't want to make the brother feel uncomfortable. So he asks her, can he go to her place? So she's excited. She said, you know what? Yeah, you can come over. One day turned to two, two days turned to three, three days turned to four, four days turned to five. Be mindful that she's been living alone for a very long time. So would we say that she has a level of vulnerability? I can say, yeah. Did it feel good for her to have a man come home when she's used to coming home to no man? I could say, yeah. But what happened ultimately is what? She started peeling back the whole story and started doing her research. The apartment that he said that he had, come to find out, was an Airbnb. The car that he told her that he had, that he said was in a shop, it was a rental. Everything started making more sense that he was lying after the crash out moment was already there. She went too far with a momentary situation. So now fast forward, she started seeing everything about this man wasn't true. He didn't have no car. He didn't have a job. He didn't have anything. So ultimately, she realized at this moment, her child's father is a bum. And now she has to raise her child, knowing financially, the father cannot contribute. And not only that, you know, he's a multi-time felon. He's in and out of jail. And all of these things, you come from a lot of drama, a lot of issues. But again, she lived in a moment and let the moment go too far, ultimately making a decision that actually put her into a situation where she has to raise, for the most part, her child by herself. So when we talk about this term, don't crash out, a lot of us make poor decisions. I know men who entertain women who are good for the moment. But when it comes to building a life, these women aren't buildable. There is nothing you can build with them. And the only thing you can build with them is what you can build for yourself. But in the same breath, that person will still be taking from it because of the fact that they're not gonna add any value to it. I've had moments where I almost crashed out where you get mad at the fact that you can do so much by people but a lot of times, people are very under, underappreciative of things in life. You can't make someone appreciate you when they don't appreciate you. You can't make someone value you when you, they, they don't value you. You can have the greatest intentions for somebody, but if they have the greatest, the poorest intentions for themselves, let me say that again. You can have the greatest intentions for someone, but if they have poor intentions for themselves, they'll literally, they will self-sabotage anything good that you do for them. There are a lot of people like that. Right? They'll challenge you to crash out because they don't have anything to lose. 
I know people today that I put in positions and yet and still they'll look at me in my face and say, I've never done anything for them. But in a moment of that moment, I can get upset, but I look at it as, does it say more about them or does it say more about me? I think it says more about them because people can make mistakes when making a decision for a number of reasons, including not considering priorities making decisions, right, that don't in line with what's important to you, right? Being inconsistent, right? Ignoring your judgment or your past lessons or using incomplete information. You can learn from others too. As some other person made a poor decision, you don't repeat the same thing, which is sad that a lot of people do that, right? Being in, in, in indecisive, being indecisive, decisive. Right? Spending too much time analyzing facts, which can lead you to ineffective decisions, which a lot of people do. Waiting too long, waiting too long to make decisions can spoil your options, right? Making bad decisions early, right? Bad decisions made early in life can result into larger losses and opportunities co costing you your situation. We crash out. I know people right now who stare around people who are triggering to them, but yet and still they don't want to get away from the triggers because it's not the fact that our enemies are the problem. We're attracted to our enemies. Some of us are attracted to being around people that are triggers to us. Some of us are attracted to being around people who, who definitely gossip. Some of us are around, attracted to being around people who are definitely drama. Because when a person is entertaining drama, it says more about you. I'm going to tell you something. One time one of my boys called my phone and said, Mike says something about me. And I looked him in his face and I said, and what did you say to Mike about him talking about me? He said, why are you flipping this on me? I said, because of the fact that you entertain the conversation. Sometimes you got to realize that the person that's entertaining the conversation, they're more the problem than anything. They're more the problem. I have people that I try to teach lessons to and help out, but sometimes they don't see it that way. I realized the other day that when you're talking to people, and you're entertaining a person's conversation. Be mindful every time a person talks to you, you're entertaining or not entertaining their conversation. Because it takes two to have a conversation. It takes two to have a conversation. Because a person could absolutely talk to you, but you don't have to hear them. Notice as a child, when your parents said things, you learned how to tune out those conversations. But the problem is we're not willing to tune out those conversations is because we want to entertain those conversations because those conversations make us feel prominent. In most cases, most people are comfortable talking about others to make them feel better about their situation. So when you listen to people talk, most of their conversations is about others because it makes them feel better about their bad situation. Damn. 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 Which only states volumes about the person that's entertaining the conversation. And this is what we do. I sit back and evaluate people, right? And I said to myself, what is the point in helping someone that don't want to help themselves? What is the point of telling someone the truth when they want to hear a lie? What is the point in showing someone the directions when you know they're going to go the opposite? Some people you have to realize in life that they're not worth your time. It's sad to say this, but that's the reality. You can hurt yourself more, right? Right? By trying to take the knife away from someone who's trying to hurt themselves. You can hurt yourself more by trying to take the knife, right, from someone that want to hurt themselves. There are people that die every day by trying to help people that don't want to help themselves. There are people that die every day by trying to help people who don't want to help themselves. I'm going to tell you a story. I had a good friend of mine who literally died but try behind trying to save the, right, the wrong woman. I had a friend who died behind trying to save the wrong woman. Sometimes you can see things in people that they don't see in themselves, ultimately telling them what they can be, but they don't want to see what they can be because it's too much work to be that. Some people are comfortable being who they are because they don't want to be more. So sometimes when you look at people and you say, I feel sorry for them, you shouldn't feel sorry for them because they don't feel sorry for themselves. Some people don't feel sorry for themselves. Some people will wake up tomorrow and do exactly what's making them lose today. Let me say that again. Some people will wake up tomorrow and do everything that's going to make them lose today. Tomorrow's another day, but you're going to do the same thing you did today that made you lose today. But when you have these conversations, we talk about the term crash out. A lot of people are crashing out on their decisions, right? 
It's like you have to look at life for what it is and, and, and know that there will always be obstacles in a way on your way to success in your journey. But some people avoid the obstacles because I'm going to tell you something. If you continue to do what's easy, your life will always be hard. But if you do what's hard, hard becomes easy to those who always do what's hard. Let me say that again. If you continue to do what's easy, your life will always be hard. But if you do what's hard, hard becomes easy to those who continue to do what's hard. You won't realize that waking up early is easy because it'll be your natural aura. You won't realize that you're saving money because it's your natural aura. You don't realize that you're not going around negative people because you're not negative more. That's not your natural aura. You will be uncomfortable being around people who do not cohabitate or intermingle with the same levels that you're on. See, sometimes we ain't on the same time. Right? They're like, I ain't on that type of time. You got to change your time because even a broken clock is right two times a day. Even a broken clock is too, right two times a day. So some people have broken clock and sometimes they write two times a day. They believe that they're always right. You got to stop questioning yourself and say to yourself that there's some people that are just not meant for me to be around anymore. I'm comfortable being alone. Because I've learned while you're alone, you're learning the best version of you. You're learning yourself more. There are people that can look in the mirror and still not recognize themselves. There are people that can have conversations with themselves and still not hear themselves. There are people that are uncomfortable going around themselves. There are people who are uncomfortable spending time with themselves. There are people who will laugh at a person who's sitting in a restaurant treating themselves to the deserving that they deserve, the level of life that they deserve. They're laughing at you for sitting in a restaurant having great dinner with yourself. They're uncomfortable with that. They don't want to see. Look at that. She over there sitting there eating that big old steak by herself. And she could afford it, and she's happy as hell. Sometimes it's the people that ain't your levels telling you to come down to their level. And a lot of us are stooping to their level, crashing out because of the fact that they're at a level that we, we wish we could be at. You see the level that they're at, and you're uncomfortable with seeing someone's levels. I've noticed in life, you have to dim your light in order to make people see your greatness. But sometimes you got to make them uncomfortable. Make them squint until they can open their eyes and see your light. So they got to come around you and squint. Make them squint. Keep shining your light. Don't dim your light for nobody. A lot of us dim our light for people who aren't worthy to even be around us. And it sounds crazy when you say that, right? But that's the true statement. Because it's an acceptance of allowing people around you. One thing about something called adult privilege, we get to choose who we are around. I get to choose who I date. I get to choose who, I'm, who I want to enter my life. But I'm not going to change what I know to make someone uncomfortable with what I know. If a person is not mature enough or not educated enough to have these conversations, guess what? I'm not changing the tone. Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm turning my station to what I want to hear, and guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to listen to what I want to listen to. I'm not going to let someone get in my car and change the radio because they don't like what I want to hear. If I want to hear about stocks, guess what? I'm listening to stocks. If I want to listen to investing, guess what? I'm listening to investing. And if you're not comfortable listening to these things, that means it's time for you to exit the vehicle. Exit stage left. But a lot of us ain't going to do that. I notice the weirdest people have the most friends. I know the liars have the most friends. I know the fakest people have the most friends. In 2024, the fakest people have the most friends. The fakest people have the most friends. The corniest people have the most friends. The lionest people have the most friends. The most inconsistent people have the most friends. I've noticed they always by inviting you to the fake party with the fake friends so you can fake celebrate, so you can fake enjoy each other's company, so you can be fake, fake, more fake and fake. And that's what a lot of people are comfortable doing, being fake. It's a bunch of crash outs. They literally faking everything. You ever got somebody that called you to have you basically co-sign a story and you know the story isn't true? And then you'll say, like, I don't know. Right? Or you say no. And they get mad at you for telling the truth. I noticed that liars will get mad at you for telling the truth. Damn. 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 But I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to lie because I want company. I'm going to tell the truth because I want the right company.
I would rather sit in an empty house alone until the right people come in and add value to it than being a house with someone I'm unhappy with. That, that is, I'd rather be in an empty bed alone rather than have someone I'm laying next to I don't love or care for. That, that I would is, rather that, not have friends than to have a bunch of people around me that's telling me what I want to hear and is not helping that, me. That, that I would rather that, be alone. Because while you're alone, you'll start seeing that the right people will come along. And it's weird when you have these conversations. Sometimes look at the narrative. The problem is I've heard this statement for years. Day one people, day one, day one, day one, day one. Your day ones is the reason why you stuck on day one. And in order for you to become great, you got to turn over the page to day two. And the day two people are more the people that are willing to accept who the person you're becoming. But sometimes by being around people who saw who you were before, they're not comfortable with seeing you to become the new version of you. And when these people aren't comfortable with you becoming a new version of you, they will ultimately be mad at the fact that you're growing. Life is about growing, but most people have something called a fixed mentality. They don't have a growth mentality. And when you're around a fixed mentality and you're a growth mentality, the, the fixed mentality gets uncomfortable being around a growth mentality. A lot of people don't have a growth mentality. They have a very fixed mentality. They crashing out. You got some people that will literally do the same thing for the rest of their life and expect that they're going to have better results. One guy said to me the other day, when I bought that big house, it's on Q. I looked at him and said, why do you think like that? He said, because I'm going to buy a big house. I said, I'm not saying you can't, but there's nothing you're doing right now that's going to solidify that you're going to buy that big house. Sometimes we get caught up in this word manifestation. That term manifestation means in action. The Bible says faith without work is dead. That means action, right? Now we're talking about faith. Faith is an action word. People keep talking about the term faith faith. Faith is not a word, it's an action word. If you're not putting in that work, ain't nothing going to happen. So faith without work, meaning the action, the work, right? And you can believe, but the action in the words that you believe more than the actual statement in itself. And a lot of people still talking about, some, hey, I'm going to have that big old house. Doing what? You've been wasting money for the last 30 some years. You still worried about a trip. You still worrying about wasting. So how are you going to get this big house when there's nothing you're doing prominently that's going to get you to that level? That is called delusion, my sister and my brother. That, that, is, that is called delusion. That's how you create delusion. Delusion is creating a false narrative. The thing about delusion is one believes their own thoughts. So therefore you believe it. And you say you're going to speak it into existence. You've been on that dead-end job for a long time. And you still can't save money on that dead-end job, but you believe that you're going to have money to buy a house. That, that, that don't make no sense. You lack the discipline because it's not the money that you're making. It's what you're doing with the money that you're making. A lot of us don't understand that it's not the money that we're making. It's what we're doing with the money that we make. A lot of people that don't make a lot of money spend a lot of money as if they got a lot of money, ultimately never making money or having money because they spend too much damn money. That, 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 the per you ever looked online and seen somebody that you know broke and they on another trip? That, 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 How the hell are they on these, all these trips? Because it's called debt. It's called credit cards. It's called borrowing. It's called liabilities. It's called no assets. Just keep wasting your money. And this is what we're doing. We out here crashing out. We are crashing out. I am scared of some people who I know what they do for a living and what they drive for a living. I'm scared of them. And they say, you're watching pockets. I'm not watching pockets. I'm watching facts. So the thing is, you'll say, oh, your pocket. No, I'm watching facts. Because it is proven, right, that your salary don't make sense for the, the, the situation that you're in. A lot of us put us in bad, ourselves in bad situations. I'm going to go on record and say this. Somebody's going to get mad. But as I like to say, I don't give a damn. 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 But the truth of the matter is, some people right now are dating liabilities. And they wonder why they ain't got no assets. Damn. damn. Some people are hanging out with people who only talk about people and they wonder why the conversation ain't helping them grow. Da, 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 da. Some people are chilling in the same neighborhoods and they wonder why they still have the same mentality. Da, da, da. Some people want more, but they realize they ain't doing a lot with the little they have. Da, da, da. Some people believe that something is going to come from absolutely nothing by doing absolutely nothing. This is insanity. That's how you create delusion. We're a delusional culture. There are people right now, right? And I had to say this to a woman other day. She got upset with me. And I'm going to say this. I said to her right now, and I'm going to be honest with you, the chances of you moving on and finding a better man, you're a fool. Some people believe there is something out there waiting for them that don't exist. And this is why they're losing. Because the greatest thing that you may have is in front of you, but you're too busy worrying about what's behind you. 
And that's the problem. You cannot see what's in front of you when you're staring what's behind you. The rear view mirror is made to look at for a second. It's not made to be driven. So if I'm driving a car, staring in the rear view mirror, I'm gonna crash. You gotta look forward. A lot of us are looking in the rear view mirror, driving, staring in the rear view mirror, thinking we're gonna not crash. You gotta glance at that rear view mirror. You gotta glance at your, your side view mirrors. You can't stare at your side view mirror and drive. A lot of us are not, we're overly distracted. We're too distracted. There are people right now that will entertain something negative, right? You go online right now, you see the most foolish things have the most likes. When you see the most grandest things that are prominently something sufficient, it don't have the likes. It don't have the comments. It don't get the shares. It don't get the repost. Why is that? Because they are ultimately creating mentalities. By creating these sick mentalities, you're gonna create the sick results. The su successful people benefit from the fact that we are crash outs. We crash outs. We a culture of crash outs and this is what they want, right? You will always see light in the dark and that's what people don't understand, but they, they too busy not looking for the light. They wanna get, stay in that dark. They wanna stay in the dark. We a culture of crash outs. I'm tired of always being a laughing stock. Some people don't mind being laughed at, I do. Some people don't mind being teased, I do. When I look at certain things online, right, I look at my culture like, this is what they're laughing at about us. And it affects me mentally because of the fact that I don't wanna be looked at as a joke no more. And the sad part is the people that's laughing at us are the people that's not willing to teach us how to be better. These are the people that are literally pushing us into environments where we believe that we only can be here. It is called a hopeless or a helpless mentality. There are people that have a hopeless or a helpless mentality. They don't believe that they can do any more because they come from environments that show them that they can't do any more. Some people go to environments, right, right? They're stuck in environments, look at this, where, where CNA is the level. There's some people that go to levels where the rooms where the, 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 the RN is the level, right? And there's some people that go to rooms where the, the nurse practitioner is the level. Technically, are they in the medical field? Yes. What is their levels? Yes. I always tell people this narrative. Stay with me, guys. Watch this. You take an apple and you cut the apple in half. When the apple splits, right, is it is still the same apple, right? If I take one seed from the left side, and I take one seed from the right side, and I take the seed from the right side, I go plant it in great soil. I take the seed from the left side, and I go plant it in bad soil. What apple will turn out better? Which tree is going to start bearing better? The right one or the left one? I want to see what y'all say. If I planted the, the seed from the right in good, good soil, and I took that same seed from the left, and I put it in bad soil, which one will grow bigger? Which one will grow more successful? Which one, guys? My right or my left one? I want to hear what y'all say. Or my love. Someone said right. Keep going. Keep going. Someone said right. Keep going. Keep going. Someone said right. Watch this narrative. And when you look at that alone, right, just look at that narrative. Look at this again, Chris. You take an apple. You cut it in half. Is it still the same apple? So if I take a seed from the left side, I plant it in bad soil, I take that seed from the right side and I plant it in good soil, the right seed will do better because of the soil. What I'm getting at is your environment is the, 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 the concept of why we're failing. When you look at that, you can have twins, identical twins. One can grow up in the hood and one can grow up in Beverly Hills and they will be, they'll be completely two different people that look the same. Completely two different people. When we don't understand environment, right? We have to control our environments. We have to change our environments because our environments are a bunch of crash outs. We're crashing out in these environments. The hood is only the hood because of the mentality that's in the environment. Black people don't make a neighborhood the hood. It's the mentality that's in that environment that makes it hood. I'm tired of people saying, it's the hood, it's the hood, it's the hood. It's the hood because of the people that's there. It's not the hood because of the place. Because a house is a house. And the building could be clean if you keep the building clean. So we got to stop crashing out. We got to stop expecting people to come fix our culture when our culture is not fixing ourselves. No one is going to fix us. We're the crash outs. We're the one that's the laughing stock and people are looking at us as a joke. But again, I said, that same 400,000, that, that 400,000, uh, no, 4,000 square foot house in Brooklyn is the same house in Long Island. It's 4,000 square foot. But what changes the area is the people, the mentality. 
And that's what we need to change. You cannot change an environment if you don't change the mentality. Because the other day I was talking to my boy and I'm sitting here chopping it up with him. Watch this narrative, guys. This is crazy. As I'm sitting there talking to him, he's eating chicken, right? He live in an environment, quote unquote, where people are proud to call it the hood, right? This is where he lives, in an environment where people are proud to call the neighborhood the hood. As he's eating the chicken, he's throwing the chickens on the floor, the bones, right on the floor, right in front of his house. And I'm looking at him. And I said, so I'm asking you a question. Who do you expect to clean that up after it's all over the floor, the chicken bones? He said, what you mean? He couldn't even see that he was the mentality that's keeping his environment down, right? And this is why the hood is the hood. When, when, when people picket, boycott, and riot, they riot in their own neighborhoods. They don't go to the nice areas. You're supposed to be in Beverly Hills. You're supposed to be in the, the better areas. If you're going to set anything on fire, you're supposed to be in the better areas, not in the bad neighborhoods. It don't make sense. You're protesting and breaking things down in your own neighborhood. You're killing the mom and pop store that's black. This is the mentality. We fight in the wrong fight, guys. When you look at how we behave, right, you see and you look at all of us, right? And when I say that, put me in this equation. I'm no better than no one. We have to realize that our culture is what we create. It's a mentality. Why is a Jewish kid can be from never been a Jew in Israel in his life, but yet and still have a certain mentality? Why a Chinese kid can be here, but yet and still have a mentality of China, and he's never been over to China, but still have that mentality, but yet and still we have a poverty mentality because it's clearly a teaching that is teaching us how to be crash outs. We're literally crashing out from material. We're we're crashing out for cars. We're crashing out for liabilities. We're crashing out for fake lifestyles that people present on social media. We're crashing out for anything that is not valuable to us elevating. And that's our culture. We're the problem. We're the problem. Right? So let's, let's get into this narrative. It starts with us and it will end with us, guys. It starts with us and it will end with us. Our culture is not what hip hop is pushing. I'm gonna say that again. Hip hop is not a culture. It is a subsector sector or genre of music. That's all it is. I'm gonna say that again. Hip hop is not a culture. Hip hop is a genre of music. Reggae is not a culture. It is a music, it's a, just a genre of music. Everything you see right now, we're making hip hop a culture to the point where people believe that hip hop is their culture. It is only music. When I hear music, I hear just, just a feeling. How do you want to feel? If I want to be happy, I put on R&B. If I want to turn up and work out harder, I turn on hip hop. That's all I see it as an emotional uh, barrier for, for, for feelings. I don't see it no more than that. People have literally allowed themselves to believe that hip hop is the culture. And this is the loss. We're losing ourselves. You have men and women that believe that they're each other's enemies, but when we come from the same, everything, everything is the same. A woman could never be my enemy, guys. Let me say that on record. A woman could never be my enemy. I don't understand how people even feel that way. I don't know how a woman could feel like I could be her enemy, right? When together we're stronger standing together. It just don't make sense to me. But this is what the culture has been taught. This is the new generation of culture. Our culture is ultimately believing that the, the war, right, the crash out is me working against a man. I'm telling you, it's so sick how we believe and think. I can sit down and give you scenario after scenario after scenario, which prominently shows that it's our choice. It's our choice. We're fighting for the, for the, the in pig intestines and the chitlins still when we deserve what we want. We come from royalty, but we still taking the, the scraps. <laughs> Say that again. We come from royalty, but we're still comfortable with taking the scraps. People tell you that you're not worthy, so therefore you don't feel worthy, ultimately behaving like you're not worthy. Who can tell me I'm not who I am? Who can tell me I'm not where I come from? It is crazy. And this is what we don't see. We, we need to change the narrative. And ultimately to change the narrative, we got to change the mentalities of the people that are pushing the narrative.
We got to stop supporting the people who are pushing poor narratives. We got to start supporting people who are lying. We got to stop supporting people who are literally giving you something called a blindfold and ultimately running behind your back to make money. There are a bunch of people online right now. They create courses and they create a bunch of false fairy tale delusional things and make you support it ultimately to make money. Nothing to help nobody else. It's a bunch of cat clout chasing liars all online. And some people believe that their information is the only way they learn if it's online. I'm tired of the gender wars. I'm tired of them. Men need women. And women need men. It's that simple. But it's not that simple to a mind that's not simple. Humans are too complex. When logic can't make sense to a human brain, then therefore the mind is sick. It is common sense. Look at the new practices, right? How come I'm asking this question? I'm asking you some questions. Watch the crash out. How come when a man and a woman break up, they automatically gotta be enemies? I'm asking this question. Two people that said they love each other. Two people that said they love each other. Now, magically, because we can't be together, or we realize that we're not for each other, because if you say you broke up with him or her, wasn't it for the better of the person? So if I break up with someone, right, it's because it's for the better of the person, meaning A, either I'm not into them no more, or B, I don't see me moving, going any further with this person. So I think that means I love the person by letting the person go, which is giving them their freedom, right? rather than holding on to this person and ultimately um, stopping them from getting to the level that they feel they deserve. So here's my question. Why do we have to be enemies when we break up? Why naturally, when I see the men and women, right, when they have children, they were good enough to get intimate, right, but they're not good enough to hold on to a child. It's sad when I see something like that. Two grown people fighting for, for, for children. I'm going to tell you something. You got a lot of narcissistic people running around here. A lot. A lot of narcissistic people. And anytime you speak about this statement, people don't even understand what that term really is. It's a lot. And I'm going to ask this question. Now, y'all going to answer this. Watch this. In most cases, guys, watch this. Who believes that they're the superior parent? Women or men? Who? Who believes that they're the superior parent? Men or women? You believe that? Who do you believe? All right, so I'm asking you guys in my life. Who do y'all think think that they're the most superior parent? Men or women? Somebody said men, somebody said women, somebody said women. No, honestly, who genuinely regurgitate out their mouth that it's their child? They're going to always want to make the decisions for the child. Whatever they say go with, it, with their child, who's usually that case? Is it men or women? Somebody said women. Somebody said women. Somebody said women. Somebody said women. Now, I'm going to tell you something. And this is the case. When two people create something, right, and one person feel entitled to it, that is because that person is a narcissist. Narcissists tend to always want to control. And when a woman believes that She's the only decision maker for a child. That means she's been taught how to be a narcissist from a narcissist. But if you don't identify that, some people will continue to teach the next generation how to be narcissistic. Now, I'm going to ask you another question. In most cases, when you walk into a home, right, and a woman is upset, do she or do she not want the whole house to feel her pain? Yes or no? If she's mad and she walks in the house, do she want the whole world to feel this? When she walk in the house, right? I'm asking the question. Somebody said yes. Keep going. Somebody else said, said yes. Somebody said no, okay. Somebody said yes. Now I'm gonna be fair to women. In most cases, most women, when they're mad, they want everyone to feel what they're feeling. They make it about them which shows that they've been taught how to be narcissists, only furthering narcissistic behaviors. I'm gonna tell you some narcissistic men do too. I'm gonna tell y'all too. These are things that we need to identify with being narcissistic. When a woman believes that she's a superior parent, 
and the father's decisions don't matter when it takes two to raise a child, right? Because there's things men can see that women can't see, and there are things that women can see that men can't see. So when a person believes that they're the superior parent and whatever they say go, that is narcissistic. When a woman walk into an atmosphere and want everyone to feel how she feels, that is also narcissistic, right? I'm gonna give you four more. A man. When a man believes that a woman is not his superior or his peer, would you believe that's narcissistic? When a man believes that a woman is beneath him, it's narcissistic. It's narcissistic. Because a true man would understand that there are things that women can do that I can't do. Yo, give me some traits of narcissism, right? Give me some traits, Dre. So if a man can't identify that and see that this is clearly wrong, then you already know what we're hitting for, right? There are men right now who will look at a woman because he pays bills, believe that he is the superior because of paying bills. Men, I'm gonna teach you something today. Just because you are a great provider, don't mean that you are a great leader. Let me say that again. Men, just because you are a great provider, don't mean that you are a great leader. Because when we use the term alpha, it only means the willingness or the ability to lead. But a lot of times, men feel like, if I make the money, I have to say so. But I'm going to tell you something, brothers, and this is the foolish men that think like that. There are things that women can see that a man can't see because God has given a woman a third eye when it comes to certain things in life. And there are things that men can see that women can't see. God has given the man a third eye. In most cases, when you have a woman and you bring your friends around them, let your women, woman evaluate that man. Now, friends that she, you bring around, she'll tell you who the Judas is amongst you all day. Let me say that again. If you have a woman and you bring that woman amongst your friends, your woman will have that gift of seeing who the Judas is amongst you. Women have that gift. They can see it. Who's the clown? Who's the, who's the liar? They can see it. I'm telling you. I don't know what it is. A woman can dictate how bad your friends are, but they have problems when it comes to choosing men. I'm going to be honest. When it comes to doing relationships, because they're not emotionally invested. Women are better when they're not emotionally invested. But when a woman is emotionally invested, when she's in her feelings, her logic is not making sense. But look at that narrative again. Let me say that again. When a woman is not dating a guy and you bring your friends around, she has the ability to see which one of your friends is the Judas. She has that gift. And I'm going to be honest. But the problem is, in most cases, they don't use that gift when it comes to choosing mates. Because in most cases, women will try to date the red flags out of men. They'll go beyond what they've seen because their emotions say that he can be. They try to date potential. And that's why they fell. That's the crash out. You're willing to jump into bed with a man that you know for a fact don't even take care of his first kid. And you're mad at the fact that you're about to have a kid and he's not one of taking care of your first your kid. Which only makes common sense. Sometimes we don't want to hear this statement. In the crash outs, you have brothers who will meet a woman who has nothing going on with her life, get intimate with the woman, and then be mad at the fact that she wants to put you on child support. I mean, when you was a paycheck from day one, it's just what it is. When you leave with your money, you'll be people, that, when you leave with your money, the people that will follow you will follow you because of your money. When you lead with your abilities, your strength, your, your mentality, right, your, 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 your leadership skills, right, then you'll have true followers who will follow you. But when you lead with your money, you'll only follow people who's following the trail of money. They're not following the mentality that you have. They're not following your strength, man. They're following your, 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 your finances, right, because you're leaving a trail of finances. So these same people are following you because of economics. They're not following you because of your strength. This is a true statement. Right? But this is what we don't talk about. A lot of us are crashing out on our lives. We're making a very, very poor decisions. We're making very, very poor decisions. I had to tell this young man today, and I want y'all to hear this. He said, why do men and women get comfortable? I said, men and women get comfortable in relationships for two different reasons. Watch this. A man will get comfortable with a woman to the point where he thinks she'll never cheat on him. So he'll do all the wrong things in a relationship thinking she will never cheat on him. I'm being honest. Men will get comfortable with a woman to the point where they'll do so much dirt and expect a woman never to cheat. Would you guys agree with that statement? Would you guys agree with that statement? Someone said facts. 
When I do this talk, I know what I'm talking about, guys. And mine, I don't write this stuff. This is all freestyle, right? Watch this. Somebody said yes. Look at him and say that statement again. Men get comfortable with women to the point where we'll stop doing things, right? Because we don't think she'll ever cheat. So therefore, we continue to do dirt because we think she'll never cheat back on us. But I'm going to say this now. Women will get a man who does a lot. Then they normalize what he do to the point where they get comfortable with what he do and then stop appreciating what he's doing to the point where the man don't want to do it anymore. Because you've normalized the fact that he's changed your tires. You normalize the fact that he pays the bills. You normalize the fact that he does these things. You don't praise him the way you did when he first got with you. So therefore, he stopped doing it over time because he don't feel the same uh, affection or appreciation that it was when he first got with you. That's the level of comfort women get. They start normalizing that man and saying, oh my God, what he does, he's supposed to do it. I'm like, yeah, that's why you're too comfortable to the point why your man don't want to do anything no more because you don't make him feel that same level of affection that he felt when he first used to do these things. Now you're comfortable with him, him doing the, the extras, the above and beyond, right? A lot of people don't want to hear that. A lot of people don't want to hear that. We get comfortable. I told you two reasons why we get comfortable. Men and women get comfortable for two different reasons. A woman will look at a man in his face and be like, you're supposed to pay rent. Even if he's supposed to pay rent, you're still supposed to appreciate the fact that he's doing it. You're supposed to pay the mortgage. Even if he's paying the mortgage, you're still supposed to appreciate the fact that he's doing it. Even if she can cook, you're supposed to appreciate the fact that she's cooking. If she washes her clothes, you're supposed to appreciate the fact that she's washing your clothes. The problem is we have a very ungrateful culture. This is a very ungrateful mentality. When you look at something that is being done for you and you've normalized that it's being done for you, you don't appreciate it, you are an ungrateful piece of crap. God damn! You are an ungrateful piece of crap. We got to stop normalizing these things because believe you me, bring it up a little bit more, Dre, it's too low. There are, a lot of, there are a lot of things right now that we've normalized that we don't want to admit is something abnormal, right? A lot of times I tell women, you have a man that's doing the above and beyond and you believe that you're going to get another man that's going to go above and beyond and you are above and beyond a fool. God damn. God damn. You're a fool. God damn. And if a man gets a woman who's been faithful through all his cheating and all his mess and believes that he's going to continue to get women like that, you're a fool. Dad, a woman Dad, is not a fool. A woman is not a fool. A woman is not a doormat, and a woman is not a good woman because of the fact that you can keep walking on her like a doormat. That is not a good woman. Sometimes a lot of men don't want to put a ring on a woman until they damn near beat her to the pulp where she don't, she don't even have, she have a low self-esteem. There are a lot of men that put women through hell. Hell. But if I say this statement, a lot of men gonna be like, yo, yo, bro, be chatting. No, bro ain't chatting, bro, I'm telling the facts. Bro, telling the facts. I don't wanna sit here and lie, right, about what we do to our women to make them the way they are. There's always an action, right, for every action. When there's an action, there will always be a reaction. And a lot of times, the women that we're seeing in today is the reaction of what we've done as our ancestors have done to these women. They've um, made these women masculine beings. These women are willing to crash out. You got women that know they can't be men that stand up to a man. This is what we're doing. Our culture is sick. And I say this with the most sickest of sickness. We're sick. We're sick. Right? Signs of lack of, of, of narcissists is, is a lack of empathy. When your man come home, ladies, and I'm going to give you both scenarios. Your man comes home. And you don't even see that the fact that this man has bust his behind all damn day and knowing that this world has beat him up mentally and you have no empathy. That's what a narcissist is, the lack of empathy. You act like what he's doing is normal. When a man gets up every day to go provide and, and chooses to put his family first and you don't value that, then there's something wrong with you. Narcissists may be able or unwilling to understand the feelings, right, needs or wants of others, right, which can make it difficult for them to take responsibility for their actions. Notice in most cases, when you approach a woman about something she's done wrong, what does she ultimately do? She changes the conversation on you because she don't want to hear anything about herself. That is narcissistic, my sisters. This is what you've been taught. You cannot be mad at the facts. A lot of women have been taught by narcissistic women how to be narcissistic. They don't even have empathy or sympathy for their men anymore. They will empathize with a goddamn stranger or a cat or an animal before the man. What are we saying here? They will feel more sympathy. Oh my God, that's a beautiful cat. You ever look at your man and said that? That's a hardworking man. 
when you go to the gas station and your car is on E, what do you pour into the tank? Gas. My ladies, you can gas your man to be a damn superhero. When he pull into that station, right, which is your home with him, and that tank is on E, you can gas that man to be a superhero. Men are egotistical-based people. And this is facts. Men are ego. And if you know a man is ego, why wouldn't you want to feed your man's ego when you know it's only going to benefit you that much more? But it's going to benefit you that much more. And I'm going to ask you this question, right? Watch this. When a man has a big house, who benefits the most? The woman. When a man has a nice car, who benefits the most? When a man lives in a good school district, his children and his women benefit the most, right? They're more protected, right? And women needs protection. Would you agree? So the safer the environment, the more protected she is. Would you agree? The woman benefits more, right? When a man makes more money, it's for his family. But I've noticed in today's society, if someone's going to get bad at this, more women are making more money, but it's giving them an ego to brag about the money they're making, believing that they're superior to men because of their economics. It is fire when a woman makes a lot of money and she still has the ability to submit to a man and allow him to lead. When I say the term submission, that only means the willingness to allow to lead. Because you can't expect a man to lead you when you ain't willing to follow. You can't expect a man to lead you when you're combative. You, you can't expect a man to protect you when, when you're not willing to do what he say. You cannot expect a man to be a man with a woman that is fighting for the, the role of being a man. It is impossible. This is the crash out. This is the crash out culture, guys. We crashing out. We want great things, but we don't understand that we have to work on ourselves. A lot of men was taught how to be little boys by little boys that were in their lives. This is the truth. A lot of my boys that you see nowadays, would you say they're hyper aggressive? A lot of these men have no emotional maturity. They have no control of their emotions. So I'm asked this question. In most cases, who do you believe has the lack of emotion, men or women? Who goes off the reservation faster, men or women? Who do you believe? In his natural aura, who is more logical and who is more emotional? Men or women, guys, who you got? Men are more logical, someone said both now, and I'm gonna be honest with you, with the both now is because the women that teach these little boys that, that's why they're the same way they are. These boys learn this from their mothers. A lot of these boys that you say that don't know how to act, they learn this from their mothers. And this is the truth. A lot of these little boys that are very aggressive, they learned that from their mothers because the mother had a lack of emotional maturity. So therefore, the boy grows up with a lack of emotional maturity, ultimately teaching another boy how to be no, have no emotional maturity. And that's what you keep seeing is a continuous problem. It's a repetitional thing. But until the culture breaks this mentality, we're going to continue to create this mentality. Right? When you look at this narrative, in most cases, I'm more nervous of a man that can't control himself than a woman. Because when a woman starts yelling, that's just a woman just yelling. When a woman's upset, that's just a woman being upset. But when a man's upset, I'm more dangerous because of the fact that he can hurt somebody. So ladies and gentlemen, when we're raising these little aggressive boys, we're seeing why these little aggressive boys are out here shooting and killing people. Because of the lack of emotional maturity. So even if the mom don't have that masculine energy in the house, that mom has to learn how to control her emotions. Because that boy won't learn how to control his emotions when he's around a woman that don't know how to control her emotions. So we can sit here and keep blaming the men and the women all day, but we're going to tell the truth. A lot of the times, the lack of uh, emotional maturity comes from a person that's very feeling-based. In most of the cases, women are very feeling-based. They're very feeling-based. Anytime you say anything about a woman, they automatically make it about them. Well, I'm not like that. We're not talking about you. We're talking about most women. If you said something about most men, I'm not going to get mad if it's a fact. But that's why the culture is failing, because we ultimately make everything about how we feel. And your feelings are subject to change when you're talking about logic. Feelings, right, and logic aren't the same thing. Logic is one plus one equals two. Feelings is, you know what, you made me feel away, so today I'm going to be upset. Feelings can go up, down, left, right. So sometimes when the shoe fits, you have to wear it. 
Let us all put our feet, ourselves in these shoes, right? Men are visual, women are emotional. Faith, you ain't never lied. Now watch, I'm gonna show you more. Some people don't want to hear this, but I'm gonna go further. Narcissists are very entitled people, right? Narcissists may have an unreasonable expectation, right? For favorable treatment, right? They may also believe that they are special and unique and they should only associate with others of high status people or from institutions. Now let me ask you a question and let's be fair. Who thinks like that? Who feels entitled, men or women? I'm asking this question, ladies, right? Who has taught you to be this way? And a lot of the times they're gonna get mad, but I'm telling you, a lot of my sisters are narcissists. They don't wanna see it. They keep blaming these men for being cheaters because they come from broken homes. They blame these men for not knowing how to create homes when they come from broken homes. But a lot of the behaviors of expectations are extreme. You have a woman who could be working at McDonald's and expect a man to drive a Benz and have a $100,000 salary. That is narcissistic. That is feeling like you're, you're, you're entitled to things that you're not. This is narcissism. And a lot of those both, when you say both, you've been defensive the whole time. A lot of the times, those little boys come from mothers who taught them how to be like that. Feeling very entitled. You will never see a man with eight kids online talking about he want a six-figure woman that can pay his bills and salary. You'll see a woman like that. That's not narcissistic. When you feel entitled to something that you aren't deserving of, but when you bring up the term narcissist, people get mad at the facts. Narcissistic behavior is very common in women. They teach it, right? Watch this. I'll go further. Want to talk more. I can give you more, right? Narcissists are very delusional. They're very delusional people, right? Narcissists may have a, 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 a extravagant or false ideas about their own importance, right? Right? Abilities, power, and identity. They may also fantasize about having or deserving something. Who this sounds like? Men or women? So I ask this question, who taught them how to be like this? We're gonna have, we're gonna talk about it. Their narcissistic mothers taught them how to be narcissistic women to the point where they have no empathy no sympathy for men. A man could literally be working as hard as he can on a bus, right? Riding a bus, you know what they're gonna say about that man on the bus? He a bum. When they see that girl on the bus, you know what they're gonna say? She's doing the best she can, which is clearly narcissistic. But you cannot teach this. You know why? Because people get upset about truth. Anytime you bring up anything that make a person feel away, they become an, an enemy of facts. I didn't create the narrative, my sister. I've only studied to understand what it is. You're seeing more and more women who are behaving like narcissistic women and not seeing their behavior patterns. Women set the tone of the family. Would you agree? Women set the tone of the family. But a man's job is to carry the family. But a man can't carry a load that is too heavy for them when the expectations are unrealistic. The expectations are unrealistic. You want the mortgage paid, the car paid, and you still want me to take you on vacations, spend all the food and, and do everything, and then I'm considerably a man. And you feel the, the value that you're giving me is just sex. The value you give me is being loyal. This is the delusion that we have in our culture. This is the delusion. And then you wonder why we're failing as a culture. Right? Wanna keep, I can keep going further, guys. Right? They need the excessive ad admiration. Who needs that more, men or women? Who needs excessive amounts of admiration? More men or more women? Narcissists may be, they may demand that others admire their, 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 their accomplishments, skills, existence, and may not be satisfied with, with com completing or, or, or just a pat on the back. The, the women nowadays are starting to want more and more and more, even though if they haven't done anything. They feel entitled to a lot of things but I don't want to talk bad about my sisters. But when I say this as a man, coming from a man's stance, seeing how they behave, I'm seeing why our culture is failing. And this is the crash out culture. This is the crash out culture, right? We can keep going. Y'all want me to keep going, right? Look, arrogant or condescending behaviors 
And I just want y'all to hear this today. Arrogant and condescending behaviors. Narcissists may display arrogant and, 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 and bad behaviors that may disrespect the rights or positions of others. A man's position is to lead and you're constant, constantly combating his, his, his leadership. You want him to lead you, but you're not willing to follow. That's a level of arrogance. You say what you want, which is condescending to what you're not willing to do. It's condescending. You say you want a leader, but you don't want to follow. Is that not condescending? <laughs> but if I say this statement, a lot of my people are going to get mad. And I know a lot of people don't jump off this live because they're like, yo, this is getting a little too heavy. Right? Perceive envy from others. Narcissists may often feel envious of other people. Who watch people more? Women watch what other women are doing with their lives and ultimately believe that they're deserving of the same mentality, the same level, the same home, the same car, the same trips, the same bags, the same shoes, the same everything. They watch the most extravagant woman and expect that they're supposed to have the most extravagant life. And if a man can't prov 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 provide that, he is not a man. He is not a man. Someone said, because you blame me one side. No, I'm trying to raise the awareness of what's going on. I genuinely believe that in most cases, right, you will say, I'm going to give you everything about a man that's considerably bad in relationships. Men are cheaters. That is one thing they will say, right? They'll say men are liars. Would you say that's true, right? They'll say men don't want to pay bills. They'll say that, right? They say a lot of the men have more than one woman. Give me some more things, guys. Give me some more things. All right, let's keep going. What else? Some things that a man are bad in relationships for. Watch this. I'm going to show you all something. Some things men do are bad in relationships. Accountability. Accountability has to be taught. Accountability has to be taught. Communication. Now, now watch this. Manipulation. Everything that we name that's wrong with men, it comes from the fact of the father's not being there to teach him how to be. Watch this statement. In most cases, when a man grows up without a father, he takes on more estrogen energy, more feminine energy, ultimately behaving to what he saw, right? And this is very prominent. Almost 70-something percent of homes that look like me have single parents. And I'm sitting here as a man today who has learned how to fix what was wrong with me, right? Telling you why I behave like that. And it was hard for me to change what I already thought was normal. You can't see, you can't fix what you can't see. And a lot of times I couldn't fix what I couldn't see because I believed that what I was doing was right. Learning this from a woman and only behaving to what I saw. Communication, when you approach a woman and you tell her about herself, is she receptive of those conversations? No. Most women don't like to hear anything about themselves. Any woman on my live lying right now to themselves, I'll call them a liar. Most women don't like to hear anything about themselves. Now you have a generation of men who don't like to hear about themselves. Right? When you, when a woman don't get her way, she throws a fit, right? You don't notice that the men are like that now? You see that men are very entitled now? Would you say that a woman will say sorry to a man if, or somebody when she's wrong? In most cases, women don't like to say sorry. This is what I'm trying to get at. It's alert behavior, right? And a lot of times, right, sometimes when you talk to people, you learn what it is. My mother's a single mother. And the one thing I will say as a single mother she did correct was the accountability. There was always a consequence for everything I did wrong. And she didn't say it four or five times. I notice nowadays more mothers will say it four or five times to the point your son, he sees you as a joke. Your daughter sees you as a joke. There has to be a, a constant or quick consequence for when they're wrong. Because otherwise they're going to take it as a joke. And this is what we need to change. Our crash out culture is so sick to the point where we don't see that. In order for us to fix the culture, we got to get out our feelings. We got to be able to hear things from the truth. In most cases, I cannot speak from a woman's stance. I can only speak from a man's stance because I'm a man. 
So sometimes women are going to be like, yo, you're a little bit more towards women. I'm like, because I don't really understand right, the, the, what y'all feel when dealing with men. Because I don't, know, I don't know how to deal with men. I'm not in a relationship with a man. So this is why it's going to sound like you're more biased because of the fact that you are a man that deal with more women. And I'm telling you from a man's lens. But again, if you can't receive the information, we can't change the culture. It is rare that you can sit with a person that can sit there and hear about themselves and be comfortable to hear it. What we're seeing is the broken home culture. What we're seeing is the crash outs of people who don't see the importance of men and women intermingling to be better. We don't think about no therapy. We don't believe in trauma. Trauma wasn't even a word when I was growing up. Emotional trauma wasn't even a word. Generational trauma wasn't a word. Therapy was the forbidden fruit. And that's our culture. How can I fix someone when they can't see what's wrong? You cannot fix the sickness. You cannot fix or heal the sickness in the village when the village is the people that are sick. How are you going to fix the sickness in the village when the sickness are the people? They're too insecure about hearing anything about themselves. Anytime you say something about a man, you better say 15 things about a woman. And if you say 15 things about a woman, you better say 50 things about a woman. This is the problem. Men want to hear negative about women. Women want to hear negative about men. And that's the only time they're fucking comfortable is when you're talking about them. Because you're going to be considerably biased anytime you talk about the truth. Because in order to raise the awareness, you have to ultimately bring the mirror to the people and show them themselves. And I'm going to tell my sisters that I don't care who get mad. A lot of y'all have learned how to be narcissists from very narcissistic women. Very narcissistic women. I read statements of facts about what's narcissism. I'm going to ask my women again before I get out of here. Who feels more entitled to everything? In most cases, a man wants what? Respect, right? But a woman feels like as soon as you meet her, she deserves your resources. Does that not sound entitled to you? Does that not, that's not, not, not sound entitled? I have to earn a woman's respect, but I have to give her my resources as soon as I meet her. It's entitled. And I sit here with conviction. Faith, you know me. I love my sisters. I love my women. I value my sisters. I can sit in a room fully. I actually come from a very strong black woman, proud woman. Who would never, she would have a, she would rather have a dollar in her pocket before she asks the government for anything. I come from that kind of mother. I come from the woman that 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 checked me when I was wrong, that 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 put hands on me when I needed checking and was comfortable with that. I come from that mother. I come from that mother that I didn't speak twice. I come from that mother. But I'm learning today, our culture is so sick to the point where you ever seen children when one child get in trouble? It's like they be like, but what about Mikey? And what the girls are doing is, so what about Mikey? He did it too. And what I'm seeing with the men is, you, you, you only getting me in trouble, but, but what about Kim? She did it too. That's what you see in big, rusty, grown people who cannot sit in the kitchen and hear heat. They cannot because they're insecure as hell about themselves. It's only a reflection of how much therapy my culture needs. If you believe for a second, and I'm going to say this before I get out of here today, that I hate women, then you're absolutely the fool. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I help more women out than I help men. But again, it's not about what I do or don't do. It's about what we say to fix what the problem is. I love my sisters. I love my brothers. Because I'm going to tell you something before I get out of here today. My favorite scripture in the Bible it says, he who says they love God but don't love their brothers and sisters is a liar. Because how can you love someone you haven't seen but you can't love the people that you see every day, what you see, but you can't love them? So I'm going to say that again. He who say they love their brothers and sisters is a liar. Because how can you love someone you haven't seen but you don't love the people that you see every day. For those who don't understand that statement, that statement only simply means, as my brothers and sisters, what I see wrong, I'm going to say wrong. And I'm going to tell the truth regardless of who I 
ever feels a goddamn way. Because if you feel that telling the truth is the enemy, and I'm going to go on record and say this, my brothers and sisters, and you're the enemy, and you're the reason why the culture is continuing to be sick because you ain't trying to heal and you ain't trying to bring the medicine to fix this culture. Till next time, guys. Don't let that go over your head.